how severe can scoliosis become? Unfortunately, scoliosis is a progressive condition. It is in its very nature to worsen over time. And really, only proactive treatment can work, on tor can work towards counteracting the progressive nature of scoliosis to try to reduce the progression. And the best approach would be to reduce it and stabilize it. Now, there are many different severities of when it comes to scoliosis. And scoliosis can range widely in its severity from mild to moderate to severe to something we call very severe. And as a progressive condition, we know wherever a scoliosis is diagnosed, it's not indicative of where it would stay. In fact, it would more likely never stay there over time. There's going to be worsening. Even scoliosis is diagnosed as mild can progress to severe if it's left untreated. And we'll normally see some type of regression through the person's lifetime as it's left untreated. Now, the question is how fast does scoliosis progress? And this is where things become very challenging to answer because there's no definite way of determining how fast with 100% accuracy what's the progressive rate going to be for any particular patient. And there tends to be variation in how fast a curve is going to progress during somebody's lifetime, which we'll discuss in a second. But there are certain uh, conditions, characteristics, and there are certain things associated with progressive rates that can help us predict when we anticipate a faster progression versus a less fast progression. And this helps us determine risk. So when we look at scoliosis progression, what we're talking about is how much risk do we think is associated with your progressive rates. As the curves get bigger and as a patient moves through this timeline, their risks may change depending on what's happening. Okay. So when we look at the what's the one of the largest things that affects how fast a curve is going to progress or one of the biggest risk things is age, the patient's age and what are they doing in their age bracket, what's happening in that is one of the largest factors associated with progression. It's one of the number one things we look at when we look at whether a curve is in the potential phase to progress faster or slower. We don't fully understand what triggers the onset of scoliosis in the majority of cases. The vast majority of cases are idiopathic scoliosis, but we do understand what triggers progression. And by far, the largest risk factor associated with progression is growth and development during adolescent stages. This adolescent growth phase is by far the greatest risk factor for rapid progression. And this is because they have a curve already and they're growing. And since they have a scoliosis in their spine that's already structural, as they grow, they have the this is when they have the chance of progressing the quickest. How fast a curve progresses and how much a curve progresses during this adolescent growth phase is unpredictable. We have no way of determining that these patients are gonna progress 20, these, pa these prog patients are gonna progress 30 degrees, these patients are gonna progress 40 or 50 or 60. Um, it's unpredictable. However, we do know as the curve progresses while they're growing, it's more likely to continue to progress. And we do know that the bigger the curve be is while they're growing, the more likely growth will continue the progression. And unfortunately, this progression can be very fast and very quick. And very quick. It, we definitely see scoliosis more often in females versus males. It's a four to one ratio, but truly we can't really predict even in males or females, how big a curve will become. Now, unfortunately, the largest curve I've ever seen in a growing child has been 155 degrees. So curves can become very, very severe in this stage. And that 155 degree curve was obviously very, very significant, but there's some unique things to understand, which we'll talk about is what was happening with this 155 degree curve. The fastest progression I've ever seen is I've seen curves progress 60 degrees in six months of time with no treatment. I've seen curves progress progress 20 degrees in six to eight weeks. So it can be very, very fast and very quick in terms of the severity of the scoliosis can happen during this progressive growth spurt. The next time or age group that we're concerned about when it comes to scoliosis progression outside of adolescent growth is later stage life. 60 to 65 plus years of age. At this stage, we see curves start to increase their rate of progression because of two main things, gravity over time and weakness and degeneration to the spine. These two things accumulate over somebody's life and can start progressing faster in later stage life. So those are the two main times that we see more rapid progression during growth, which by far is the, the fastest time and the quickest time, and then of course in later stage life.
So as this curve becomes worse, what happens is the curve size increases. And as it increases, it causes more asymmetrical forces to the body. And these asymmetrical forces to the body starts increasing the effects that the scoliosis could have. And progression by far, number one, makes the spine more rigid. This, this scoliosis spinal rigidity is by far the most fact, the biggest factor that limits the ability to reduce a scoliosis surgically and non-surgically. It, it makes it re less responsive to all types of treatments. So as curves worsen, they become more difficult to treat in almost any manner. So therefore, treating curves smaller obviously can prevent this from happening. In addition, is if we're using conservative treatment approaches and we want to focus on spinal movement and exercises, the more rigid the spine is, the more difficult it becomes comes for these patients to perform these exercises, so conservative treatment can also be affected. Also, the more rigid spines become, the more difficult it is for them to tolerate bracing properly, and the more, different, the, the diff more difficult they are to tolerate um, any type of rehabilitation or physical therapy. This is also true as spines become more rigid, it's more difficult for them to tolerate a surgical correction as well. So everything becomes more difficult to deal with as curves become bigger and more rigid. And scoliosis is not limited to just affecting the spine. It can affect all the muscles, all the tissues, it can affect the nerves around the spine, and it can lead to some main, um, some, some serious complications as curves progress. However, there's no definite number, meaning if your curve becomes this number, it doesn't always mean you're gonna get this problem. In fact, in children, no matter how big the curve becomes, like this 155 degree curvature that I met in a child, the number one thing that people notice in children or what children feel is just posture posture deviation. The only thing that this child had with 155 degree curve was you were able to see a postural misalignment, significant postural alignment. He had, they had no pain, they had no dysfunction, they were able to do in things like any other child was able to do. Now, unfortunately, the opposite is true in the adult patients. Adult curves progress because of gravity over time, like I mentioned. And this gravity over time causes compression. And this compression to nerves and tissues around the spine almost always leads to pain. So the adult patient, normally the number one thing that brings on treatment is pain and malfunction, where in children, the number one thing that brings on treatment is postural deviation. Now, as curves worsen, is scoliosis curable? And unfortunately, scoliosis is an uncurable um, process. It can be treated. So when we look at scoliosis treatment and scoliosis correction and scoliosis um, improvement, what we're looking for is reducing the curve and stabilizing. There is no treatment, even surgical treatments that actually cure scoliosis because the majority of cases, we it's, it's scoliosis is idiopathic, meaning we can't tell you what caused it, so we can't cure it. And there are no treatment that guarantees 100% improvement. Um, or, but however, when scoliosis is treated as close to the diagnosis as possible and is treated at a smaller curve at a younger age where it's more flexible, the, the what can be achieved is always greater, meaning treating a 20-degree treating a curve and reducing it versus treating a 60-degree curve and trying to reduce it, the 20-degree curve is always going to end up with a smaller curve at the end of the game. Now, Surgical treatment is limited to only treating severe curves because of the invasiveness associated with surgery. So in order to opt for surgical treatment, you have to let your curve worsen and worsen and worsen until it becomes to a severity range where you can consider a surgical option. The good news with conservative treatment options is that we can treat curves at a much smaller time because our treatments are not invasive. Meaning we're not fusing spines together. We're not using rods and screws. We don't require a, a week of hospitalization. We're using therapy, exercises, rehabilitation, uh, corrective bracing to help reduce the curve. So we can treat curves at a much smaller scale or a much smaller size because our treatments are not nearly as invasive. So when we look at scoliosis, we know scoliosis is a progressive condition. It's either progressing slowly or progressing or chance of progressing rapidly, but it's almost vir it's virtually almost guaranteed to worsen over time. We just don't know how fast or to what size. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, our goals are to try to tr start treatment as close to the time as diagnosis as possible with the goal at reducing curves. Because if we can reduce curves, we know the 
the largest factor in how, how likely a curve is to progress is the size. So by making the curve smaller, we reduce the risk associated with progression. And by reducing the size, we also re reduce the, how the scoliosis affects other parts of the body. And this eliminates the need for more invasive treatment in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.